Well, thanks for joining us tonight for this special edition of the news at six here on WCNC Charlotte. I'm Jane Monreal. We're going to get to the forecast on this chilly day, but first many will be bracing the cold tonight from the warmth of their home, but not everyone has that luxury. WCNC Charlotte's Anna King went to a winter shelter earlier today that says with these extremely low temperatures, they expect to be at capacity again Sunday night. Anna. That's right. I'm here at the winter shelter at the Salvation Army in Gaston County, and they told me when those temperatures dropped yesterday, they were full to capacity, and they expect to see the same thing tonight. Now, officials here told me they can typically house around 30 people, but since they expected to see more come in this weekend, they got more cots, more food, and asked for additional volunteers to accommodate. Now, they also had transportation available on site to take some of the overflow to a nearby shelter. Now, they say with temperatures expected to be below freezing again tonight, they expect to have to provide those same accommodations. Just because of the decreased temperatures uh, this weekend, we saw more than 30. So again, we were able to you know transform elsewhere. So just in case we got the overflow, but this is the first time this year we've seen such overflow. But again, the decrease in temperatures was a you know, reason for that. Now he says even after this weekend, they can always use additional volunteers. So to find out how you can help out here, you can head to our website at WCNC.com. But for now here in Gaston County, Anna King, WCNC Charlotte. Anna for that information. It has been a very cold weekend right now as we check uh, the rest of your forecast moving into the beginning of the work week. Meteorologist KJ Jacobs is here and uh, we are looking for that change KJ because uh, you know a lot of folks are threatened with that cold weather. That's exactly right, Jane, but good news on that front. Relief is in sight. We do have warmer temperatures on the horizon, and that warm-up cannot get here soon enough, as the cold is certainly having a deep impact across the Carolinas, all consuming with cold air. But take a look right now. I want to give you a live picture outside. This is coming in from Dallas, North Carolina. Yes, this weekend has been beautiful pretty much from start to finish, but it has been a cold one as we have clear skies for tonight and we'll have a lighter wind for tonight. So it's not going to be as blustery as it was last night and the wind chills won't be too much of a factor, but the cold air will remain in place for now. Current temperatures across the area. We're above freezing. A little bit of good news on that front. Many of us right now, Charlotte at 38, 35 in Monroe, 36 in Concord, Salisbury and Statesville at or near freezing temperatures 35 just above it in Morganton. Over the next 12 hours, you can see we'll take another nosedive for tonight, but this is the last night before that warm up begins into your day tomorrow. So notice by 2, 3 a.m. overnight hours, pre-dawn pre hours tomorrow. We'll be between 18 and 22 degrees, so overall a clear and extremely cold night. Overnight temperatures, this is out the door for your Monday morning. This is why we want you to dress in layers. We'll be in the mid and upper teens, around 20 in Hickory, 1920 in Charlotte, Monroe, Waysboro, about 15, 16 degrees, Sherrall about 18, and Boone will be in the teens as we start off your day tomorrow. So be prepared to bundle up, put the gloves on, mittens if you have them, and hat, and cover your, your mouth, your nose with that scarf tomorrow morning. Into your day, we'll have sunshine. This will bring some relief. And notice temperatures will warm up by lunchtime tomorrow near 40. By 3 p.m., we should max out between 48 and about 50 for highs tomorrow, so a much milder afternoon, and it's not going to be windy for your day, so you'll be able to notice uh, the more uh, warmer temperatures, if I may. But here's where we're going to turn the corner. Monday will be your dry day. Tuesday, I am giving us that small chance for a shower to occur. By Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we'll have a better chance for some showers. So have those umbrellas ready. Be ready to transition from those heavier coats to more of your rain gear. So your umbrella and your raincoat, perhaps even rain boots, as we'll have a front to stall out across the area. And it's going to drive up those rain chances. You'll see we'll have an influx of moisture across the area. Notice the map is turning green. 4 p.m. Wednesday, we'll have a decent chance for showers to move in. The front, as it stalls out, it will kick up those rain chances for Thursday as well as into your Friday. So we'll deal with periods of rainfall between Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and we'll have a second batch of rain to move in into your weekend, but not a washout for your weekend. Rain chances will likely move in late Saturday, and then we'll have some showers to linger into your Sunday morning and then clearing out by Sunday afternoon. 
I want to take you now to your guy roof and seven day forecast and break it all down for you. So we'll wrap this up here by tomorrow afternoon. Highs in your 50, about 10, 12 degrees warmer than where we were today. By Tuesday, we're going to make it over that hump around 52. Most of your day will be dry Tuesday. We'll see those showers moving in late Tuesday. And once again, scattered showers on Wednesday and get ready for highs to surge near 70 for Thursday and Friday. But we will contain deal with some rainfall, excuse me, there as we head into the end of the week as well as into your weekend. One of those warmer temperatures with the sunshine, though, needed that pair to happen. Oh well, thanks KJ. And you can find the latest radar and weather maps should any winter weather conditions show up in the forecast. You can find that by clicking on the weather tab on WCNC.com. A man in Mooresville now in police custody and facing several charges for allegedly dragging a North Carolina deputy along the pavement. 33 year old Corey Allen Lees are behind bars tonight. WCNC Charlotte's Miles Harris shows how deputies were able to connect the dots and track this man down. What deputies in Iredell thought would be just a routine traffic stop at this gas station was way more than that. Where a deputy was dragged several feet by a vehicle, that same deputy firing their weapon and search efforts from multiple departments looking for a wanted suspect. Corey Lezar is now in police custody and let's go ahead and break down how deputies were able to track this suspect down. This was the scene that neighbors woke up to early Sunday morning after several officers arrested a wanted man after searching for the 33 year old for hours. Corey Allen Leeser is now in custody after local authorities from the town of Davidson, Iredell County and Huntersville K-9 units tracked the suspect who was found near Hallie Marie. In Abraco, who lives in the neighborhood and said that the latest arrest has been the talk within her community. But we're really surprised this morning because we didn't know that he was still in the neighborhood. We were just looking outside of our windows and saw the police um, with dogs in our backyard. And so just watched for a little while and then saw the police start running in the forest and then came back through our yard with, with the guy they had been tracking all night. Officials said the driver tried to escape the deputy by getting back into his car. As the deputy tried to pull Leaser out of that car, he put the car in drive and drugged that deputy for about 15 to 20 feet. Leaser is now charged with felony assault with a deadly weapon on a law enforcement officer. Felony flee to elude, resist, obstruct and delay several driving related charges. Bracco feeling a sense of relief now that a wanted man is behind bars. I think the whole neighborhood, everybody's been talking about it this morning. Everybody's feeling a lot safer this morning. Leaser was given no bond stemming from the events on Saturday evening. The sheriff's office said the deputy involved was not seriously injured. In Iredell County, Miles Harris, WCNC Charlotte. One person is dead after a car crash on I-85 South heading toward Gastonia near exit 19. It happened around 4 this morning. Gastonia police posting on their Facebook saying only one car was involved. The road was closed earlier this morning but has since reopened. Investigators say the victim was not wearing a seatbelt at the time of the crash. We are learning new information about a two alarm fire near Ballantyne that we first told you about this morning. Two families now displaced tonight. Check out the scene from the neighborhood around 3 this morning. It happened on the 11,000 block of Fiddler's Roof Lane that's near Ray Road. Charlotte Fire says the fire started in the attic space near the HVAC unit. CFD says it took 50 firefighters less than 30 minutes to get things under control. No one was injured, but they say it appears accidental. The fire caused $155,000 in property loss. We've also learned new details about a house that caught fire on Friday. Two adults, a child and the family pet are now without a home as a result. It happened near Monroe and Woodbury Roads. Investigators say the exact cause of the fire can't be conclusively determined. The fire caused about $115,000 in property damage. Looking ahead now, Governor Roy Cooper will be in the Queen City on Monday. He'll join other Democratic leaders on the would-be 51st anniversary Roe v. Wade to advocate for a Joe Biden win. But it's not just Democrats leveraging abortion to gain voter support. WCNC Charlotte's Caitlin Hagwood with a closer look at how the procedure is playing a key role in the 2024 presidential race. From Washington, D.C. to Phoenix, Arizona. 
protesters taking to the streets over the weekend in support of abortion access. So that women can make the best decision about their own lives. The demonstrations come as Monday marks what would be the 51st anniversary of the landmark Supreme Court decision Roe v. Wade. We want to win this day. From the streets to the campaign trail, where 2024 presidential hopefuls are optimistic their stance on abortion will be enough to sway voters, with former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley hoping to strike a balance as both pro-life and committed to reaching a national agreement. How am I not conservative? I was a Tea Party governor. I passed voter ID. Meanwhile, President Joe Biden's camp preparing to take their campaign on abortion access nationwide, striking a clear contrast to Republican frontrunner Donald Trump. One does not have to abandon their faith or deeply held beliefs to agree the government should not be telling folks what to do with their own body. The next contest will be Tuesday in New Hampshire as Republican voters take to the polls for the first primary of the 2024 presidential election cycle. Kaylin Hagwood, WCNC Charlotte. And our crew will be on the ground as Governor Cooper arrives in Charlotte Monday afternoon and we'll bring you that coverage starting on WCNC Charlotte at four. In more political news, today we're learning Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has ended his bid for the presidential nomination. He made the announcement in a video statement posted on X, the platform formerly known as Twitter. If there was anything I could do to produce a favorable outcome, more campaign stops, more interviews, I would do it. But I can't ask our supporters to volunteer their time and donate their resources if we don't have a clear path to victory. DeSantis came in a distant second in the Iowa caucus. He has endorsed President Donald Trump, saying the country can't afford to go back to the old guard of the Republican Party. Well, before we end tonight's newscast, WCNC Charlotte has partnered with Boy Scouts of America to help fight hunger in our community with scouting for food. Next Saturday, area scouts will give out uh, those door tags asking for food donations. They're collecting non-perishable food on your doorstep by 9 a.m. Saturday, February 3rd for scouts to collect. You can also drop off donations at Subaru Concord or Subaru South Charlotte through February 3rd. And you can donate money online to Nourish Up, formerly known as Loaves and Fishes, by texting scout for food to 44 Three, two, one. Well, thanks for joining us and watching this special digital edition of WCNC Charlotte News at 11. KJ, myself, as well as our Ashley Stroline with sports, will all be back here. See you tonight at 11. Good night.